All right, hello and welcome everyone. Happy New Year. It is today's, what's today? January 6th, January 5th, Saturday, January 5th. And I've got a couple days left, uh, the weekend basically, and then I go back to work on Monday the 7th. And tomorrow, if you're a Sumo fan, over on my Sumo channel, I'll be putting up the Welcome to the Basho video and we'll be kicking off the new Sumo tournament uh, in a week on Sunday the 13th. But today's video is about international news as seen from the lens, uh, through the lens of Japanese readers of the newspaper. So uh, the newspaper, this was December 31st, obviously New Year's Eve, um, the Japan News. And they asked their readers uh, of both this and the Japanese version, uh, the Yomiuri Shimbun, to vote on their top stories of the year that happened uh, outside Japan. Uh, and uh, basically things not, not directly involving Japanese people. I think every story is, yeah, is about other people. So nothing about the Olympics or anything as far as uh, the Japanese team, even though that happens outside of Japan, right? So top international news stories of 2018. There you can see Donald and, and, and uh, so a little preview of what's to come. Uh, Kim Jong-un, uh, and it's on two, two, two pages, big old thing. So I like to just take it and put it up in my glasses, tack it up to the board and let the students look at it and see. So they had uh, less readers vote on the international stories for some reason than the international stories. Uh, if you haven't seen the domestic news stories, uh, there's another video. Just click on you know my homepage and go to uploads, and it's it's right there next to this one. Uh, about 19,000 people voted on the top domestic news stories, but only about 12 and a half thousand, 12,492 voted on the top international news stories. Um, so they give you a list, and then I think you're able to write in, uh, and people vote. Okay, so I'm going to go from 10 to 1 like I did in the other video. Here we go. Number 10, and this is something I'm sure that if you're in England or the UK, uh, it, it was dominating your news cycle, but uh, voted number 10 here by Japanese readers. Uh, the European Union on November 25th officially agreed on a draft withdrawal agreement and other matters related to Britain's departure from the bloc in March next year. Next year meaning now, 2019. So yeah, the EU agrees on the Brexit draft. And includes a little picture there of Theresa May, the Prime Minister of Great Britain. How many female British Prime Ministers have there been? I mean, obviously we got Margaret Thatcher. We have this lady now. Is that is that the only two? Somebody leave me a comment. I'd like to know. Um, of course, America, we've never had a had an American female president. And of course, Japan has never had a female Prime Minister either. So we're both a little bit behind in that sense. Uh, but anyway, be curious to know, is she the second one after Ma Maggie, or was there more, and I just don't remember them. Okay, number nine is an American news story, as voted on. The Democrats win the House in the U.S. midterms. Little picture of, uh, how do you pronounce her name? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, am I saying that right? A uh, very popular uh, young uh, Democrat from the Bronx, who is... A lot of fun to follow on Twitter if you're a Democrat. Um, so the U.S. midterm elections on November 6th were the first opportunity for Americans to pass judgment on the administration of Donald Trump since he took office while Republicans maintained their majority in the Senate. It's true. I think they're 51 to 49 now. Democrats seized control of the House of Representatives, creating a divided Capitol Hill. And it's really impacting people right now. I'm sure a lot of you know if you're following the news that Donald, the Donald... <laughs> has uh, closed down the American government to try to get his wall built. Um, and so that just puts a lot of American people that work in civil service jobs and work for the government out of work. Uh, no paycheck, etc. You know, they, their pay is suspended, etc. While the government works this out. And unfortunately, the people that work in Congress don't get their pay suspended. Donald Trump doesn't have any problems, but you know people, you know, getting by on their government job. You know, whether you're a secretary or even a janitor in a building or or any kind of position where you're not making you know seventy five hundred k a year, you want that paycheck. You know, I I would be in desperate situation if 
If my school said, you know what, Jason, we're not going to give you a paycheck next month. You got to wait till the next month. And, and who knows, you know, so yeah, that's, that's tough. Uh, I know I went on one website. Where was I? Oh, I was just, I, I still bank. I have a bank in America where I can send stuff so I can buy things in America easily. And they had a big thing on there at the top of their webpage. You know, if, if you've been affected by this, you know, the government shutdown, let us know and we'll help you. It's nice. All right. Number eight, U.S.-China trade friction escalates. The administration of U.S. President Donald Trump imposed restrictions on imports of steel and aluminum, or aluminum, <laughs> from China on March 23rd. In response, China increased tariffs on U.S. products, including pork and wine, on April the 2nd. So yeah, you know, he's trying to flex his, like, you know, oh, I'm so smart in business acumen. Why am I not getting, oh, I'm going the wrong way, that's why. Uh, so, and, you know, like China, 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 he's really obsessed with China. And, uh, you know, as he should be, they are an up and coming, I mean, they're the second biggest economy in the world, maybe the first now, I don't, well, no, I, I doubt they've taken over America yet, but, uh, yeah, they're certainly, you know, the, the power player now in the world next to America. So, uh, but, uh, he's being very... You know, I see him sitting sometimes at these tables and I'm like, you know, do the other world leaders who are fairly educated men and, you know, wise and have been doing politics for a while, do they just listen to what's coming out of his mouth and just sort of wince and cringe and be like, oh, well, we have to take this because he's the president. But man, what an idiot. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure in certain situations he can come across as knowledgeable. And I think in business, he knows what he's talking about. He didn't get to where he was, you know, not knowing anything about business, but in other factors i know he's made some really big gaffes about like world knowledge and historical knowledge and ugh, it just pains me as a history teacher all right number seven koreans no sorry not koreans but the koreas north and south form joint team for the winter games so north korea wanted to participate at the last minute so the north and south korean you Women's hockey teams united and formed a single team to compete in the games. Really nice. Um, you know they're making they're making strides. They're they're trying to uh, get there, and and that's good. You know we don't want North Korea to be North Korea like it is now for very much longer. Uh, you know the people there I think suffer a lot uh, under the regime as far as you know just day to day and what they're able to access in the world and, and what they think about the world, etc. And uh, it'd be nice if some of the restrictions were lifted and, and that, and obviously the nuclear weapons is a big deal. And those went away from being so close to where I live. Um, <laughs> okay. Number six, much happier, much happier, uh, uh, story. Uh, Prince Harry ties the knot with Meghan Markle. Uh, the wedding ceremony of Britain's Prince Harry second, son of Prince Charles and American actress Meghan Markle was held at Windsor Castle in the western suburbs of London on May 19th. More than 100,000 people gathered to watch the people's horse-drawn carriage proceed through the streets. The British royal family announced they're expecting their first baby. Aww. So there you go. Uh, yeah, big deal. Not too huge here. I think people um, were interested, but it wasn't as big a deal as when Kate and uh, William got married. Um, I think it was a much bigger deal in America, probably because the woman he married was American, and um, and I think she's she's African American, she's black, um, so you know, good for him. You know, he's he's he married a commoner and, and not even a British person and not even a white person. So uh, good for Harry, you know, um, going for love and not worrying about what people say, you know, type of thing. And I think I think people in Britain are way more accepting of that kind of thing now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't if if a British, I'm sorry, if a Japanese prince uh, tried to marry a non-Japanese person, I think there'd be quite an uproar. But maybe not anymore. It would depend if he was. You know, Harry's not ever going to be king. Okay, once Will and Kate had their first baby, you know, boom, he's he's way off the list now. You got to remember, Charles still gets to be king. If, if Queen Elizabeth ever dies, you know, it's just like she goes on and on forever. And then Charles, then William, and then somebody else. So it's going to be a long time, and it's never going to be Harry. So, but anyway, so there you go. Nice, nice story there. 
And, you know, people knew about it here and stuff, but I don't think it was such a big deal here. Uh, but yeah, Windsor Castle, my, my aunt, my aunt Doreen and my uncle Bert used to live in Windsor. So when I would go as a child, we would always go to Windsor Castle. I love Windsor Castle. Um, it's, it's fabulous. If you go to London, you have to make a trip out to Windsor and go see Windsor Castle. Um, and then there's like a Legoland there, I think, and some other stuff. Great, great fun day trip from London if you visit England. All right. Number five, much more serious story. And uh, one that, you know, I don't think we've really felt the full reverberations of yet, but Saudi journalist murdered in Turkey. Uh, Jamil Kash Khashoggi, a Saudi journalist known for criticism of Riyadh, was murdered in Saudi Arabia's consulate in Turkey on October 2nd. The Saudi government initially denied involvement in the case, but later admitted Khashoggi was killed inside the consulate after a spate of media reports revealed such details as an audio recording of his killing that had been obtained by Turkish authorities. So yeah, pretty grisly stuff. Um, <clears throat> he was very critical of uh, the Saudi government, or not even the Saudi government, although the Saudi government and the Saudi royal family might be one and the same thing almost. But yeah, very, very... A critical of the Saudi royal family, um, and they wanted him to stop, you know, saying bad things, and they killed him, uh, and uh, they like, you know, cut his body up and took it out of the embassy in pieces, and you know, grisly details came from that. Um, but just that kind of like abuse of power, in kind of like openly doing it and not caring really what the rest of the world thinks, and yet, you know. Donald Trump, again, you know, didn't say, look, you guys are, what, look what you just did. We're not dealing with you anymore. You know, no more trade with Saudi Arabia, blah, blah. No, you know, it's just, there's too much money involved and et cetera, et cetera. And Donald, you know, Donald doesn't really care about journalists anyway. He hate, he hates the fake news. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's, it's sad that nobody will stand up to Saudi Arabia and say, hey, you know, this is not cool, man. All right. Yo, number four. You know, number four and uh, number uh, number two are very closely linked. So here's four. Uh, South and North Korean leaders hold first talks. So South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un held their first summit meeting in the Peace House on the South Korean side of Panmunjom on the military demarcation line on April the 27th. The two leaders signed the Pan Moonjon Declaration, a document spelling out their aim to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula and trumpeted Korean unity ahead of an unprecedented U.S.-North Korean summit meeting in June. All right. So there you go. Again, you know, trying. They're, they're making steps to try to create a unified Korea. And if, you know, if we can do that and have it not be, uh, you know, a dictatorship anymore in North Korea, that would be great. Uh, I don't see him giving up his power, though, Kim Jong-un, unilaterally. But uh, we can make strides, perhaps. All right, so that was 4-3. Unfortunately, you know, we had a lot of, if you watched the other video on domestic news, we had a lot of um, tragedies, natural disaster tragedies here. We had typhoon, we had earthquake, we had, um, we at one point I think we had a volcano erupt, but I don't think anybody was harmed in that. Uh, we had flooding, severe flooding that killed over 200 people in Japan. Um, and, of course, there was a powerful earthquake that hit Indonesia. Uh, Indonesian central Sulawesi Island was hit by a powerful 7.5 magnitude earthquake on September 28th that killed more than 2,000 people and left more than 100, no, uh, 1,300 missing. Coastal areas in particular suffered tremendous damage from the tsunami which experts believe was created by earthquake-triggered landslides that caused chunks of the coast to collapse into the sea. So, obviously a lot of empathy here in Japan for people affected by earthquakes and tsunami. Uh, so that was number three, as voted on by the Japan. Okay, number two, you already got a preview of it. Uh, U.S. and North Korea hold first summit talks. And this, you know, I, you know, I give Trump a lot of crap, but... That's, that's a good thing. Um, that certainly 
uh, amazing that he got away with it after calling him, you know, names like Rocket Man and stuff and, and belittling him. Um, but there you go. U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met in Singapore on June 12th for the first summit meeting between the two countries. After the historic meeting, they signed a joint statement in which Kim committed to working toward complete denuclearization and Trump promised to provide security guarantees to North Korea. Trump also raised the issue of Japanese abductees during the summit. This was a huge part of the news of that meeting here in Japan. Uh, there were Japanese people that had been abducted, abducted by North Korea back mostly in the 70s and 80s, I think, and uh, taken over to North Korea um, and... Uh, you know, they're still missing and stuff, and, and so we'd like to know about them. The United States and North Korea have had hostile relations since the Korean War back in the early 1950s. That the two leaders met face-to-face -face and signed a document committing to denuclearization is a matter of no small significance, according to this newspaper. So, and I agree. Uh, so I, I, give, I give him, of all the things he's probably done in his presidency so far, I give him a thumbs up for that. Uh, so, way to go, Donald. Okay. And the last, the story I'm sure most places in the world follow to some extent. We followed it really closely here in Japan. And that's the Thailand team that got stuck in the cave. All 12 boys and their coach saved from a cave in Thailand. There they are, obviously, uh, many days after the ordeal, all in fresh clothes, etc. Uh, the mission to save 12 members of a Thai junior soccer team and their coach from a cave in northern Thailand reached a successful collusion on July 10th when the last members were extricated uh, to cap an 18-day all-out rescue effort. Man, so they were down in that cave for over two weeks. The 12 boys and their coach entered the Tam Luang Cave in the province of Chiang Rai on June 23rd but became trapped due to heavy rains that flooded the area. U.S. forces, a special cave rescue team from Britain and others joined Thai authorities in the search. On July 2nd, British divers spotted the group about five kilometers from the cave's entrance and confirmed that all the boys in the coach were still alive. And they all got out safely, so that's great. Um, you know, happy story, I think. You know, <laughs> uh, we had a lot, like I said, we had a lot of tragedy. We had a lot of natural disasters. We had, you know, things that didn't necessarily go right. Uh, we certainly didn't have a lot of good news coming out of Washington a lot of the time. But this was kind of a story that, you know, could have been very tragic and ended up uh, as, as a happy ending. And so I'm not surprised that that's uh, number one, according to the Japanese readers. Okay, so let me know in the comments, uh, you know, what was the big international news stories from your angle, uh, where you're living, if you're in Canada or you're Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Ireland, wherever you might be, uh, Looking out into the world, uh, what 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 was something that you felt was an important thing that happened in the world? Um, let me know down in the comments because I'm very interested to read. I've read some good comments at the bottom of the domestic news stories uh, about what was happening in countries in Europe. Somebody talked about, you know, here from England and Brexit really dominated their news, etc. So. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested to know. Thank you for watching, and uh, just so you know, I've got a new program uh, that I'm doing called 50 Trips Around the Sun. The first one is up on the channel. You can go find that. Uh, and number two, maybe tomorrow or probably Monday, uh, I'm doing the research now for the, the year 1970, and uh, I'm going to go up through the 70s, up through the 80s, and all the way up to today, uh, one episode at a time for each year that I've been alive, I turn 50 later this year. Okay, so thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, well, if, if, if this is it, and I don't see you until next year, have a great 2019, and uh, uh, take care of yourselves. Okay, peace.